Okay, uh, UFC Fight Night 121, uh, it was out in Sydney. Um, we're just doing a little breakdown of Nick Lentz and Ill Will Brooks. So we're later in the round, I believe it's the second round. They've been doing a few of the same transactions uh, throughout the fight. Um, Ill Will Brooks is doing the right things to get himself out of danger, but now here, a little deeper into the round, he slips up and makes some mistakes. So they're here, they're moving around. Will Brooks throws a combo, just covers up. Uh, Lentz throws a cross hook and Ill Will just starts covering up here. He gets his double under hook. As soon as he has his double under hook, he's stepping up with the head's on the inside. This is where Nick Lentz goes to push to clear his elbow over to come over top. As he takes down, he uses his leg up here to block the hip to jump over for the defense. His leg is actually in between as they're there and he starts fighting to climb it out to wrap it up. I think his hand got caught a little bit but as Ill Will starts to pressure up, he helps roll him over where he follows him on top, and then he secures the finish. So he gets his double underhooks, right? He's here. Uh, Ill Will's doing the right thing by keeping his head on the inside to save himself from any of the submissions. Nick Lentz is being smart, trying to get his head to the outside to clear. As he starts to fall down, he's blocking the arm. And as you see, as they start to fall down, uh, Ill Will tries to jump over. If he jumps all the way over right away, he's completely free from my choke now. Here, escape number two. He starts to fight to get the leg out, but Will Brooks pushes the leg back underneath his leg as he tries to jump over. And then he jumps over here, and then as I'm turning, he's turning to grab the leg and re-wrestle me back there. All right, guys, so we're talking about Ryan Benoit's head kick knockout. Okay, so we're dealing orthodox for southpaw, so the first thing we're looking for is that left foot outside of his. Right, we're playing with that, that lead hand, guys. It's kind of more of a touch now. Right, I'm looking for three areas. I like going through that low kick body and head, right, and I also look for that right hand down the middle. So we were moving around, okay, Benoit noticed that he kept dropping his, his back hand to load up that punch, guys, so what he did is he fainted, waited for that hand to drop, step up, right, right up to the face, guys. Okay, so what one other thing he did, guys, is he did stick that right knee up front, right, in case there was a level change to a takedown, if I did a traditional roundhouse, Polly could just catch my kick, take me for a ride, hit me, right, so he just put that, he put that knee right, right up in front, guys. So he fainted, stepped in, boom, knee up front, guys. Protected, protected him, right? And then ended up getting the top shin knock out there. There's two ways of throwing the roundhouse, right? The body, guys. Um, for MMA purpose, okay, I like to put my knee in the front, okay? For the reason that, right, if Dan shoots and I throw a traditional right, or, uh, roundhouse, right, shoots for that, uh, that double and I throw it, it's easy for him to catch it and run me over. There's nothing uh, in front of his face, okay? The way I like to do, guys, is I, I bring my hip up, I put my knee in front, okay? It's kind of like insurance, a little bit of protection, right? If he does throw that level change, guys, my knee and the rest of my body, right, my entire shin is gonna come across, right? So he shoots that takedown, my knee is coming across, right? He level changes harder, that knee's gonna hit that face, right? He doesn't level change, I can still clean, i uh, land a clean right kick, okay guys? So that knee is just another safety precaution, especially in MMA, especially when you can get taken down. 